there's much in the, um, a lot of the creation story in Genesis and elsewhere in the Bible, where wherever the world's creation is referenced, clearly interacts with Canaanite mythology and, and the Canaanite pantheon. And many of God's names, or many of God's appellations, are direct appropriations of the names or titles of Canaanite gods. For example, El, Elyon, Shaddai, Adon Olam, and many more. Um, and, and many of God's actions in the creation stories parallel the actions of the Canaanite chief god, Baal, in, uh, in the Canaanite creation stories. For example, God creating and subduing the sea and then creating and subduing sea monsters and alligators and whales. There's even a credible theory that the Israelite God had been part of the Canaanite pantheon, one of the lesser gods, part of the family of gods that was under Baal, under the head god in the Canaanite pantheon. Um, and this is, there are many indications that Israelite culture, including the Israelite religion, drew on both Egyptian and Canaanite culture and religions. And this fits in with, uh, with what we assume we know of the Israelites' origins as nomadic or migratory people on the southern edges of Canaan in the desert between Canaan and Egypt. And, uh, and, and, on the and on the lower rungs of Canaanite society. And it also works well with the recurring theme in the entire Bible of an ongoing effort by God and, and by, by Israelite religious authorities to separate Israelites, Jews, from pagan worship, specifically worship of Canaanite gods like Baal and Ashtoreth. The, uh, the, the, the Torah's prohibition on marrying Canaanites, for example, if you look at Exodus 34, 16 and Deuteronomy 7, 3, this prohibition on marrying Canaanites is explained in those verses as an explicit effort to prevent Canaanites from drawing Israelites from the worship of their God to the worship of the Canaanite gods. The, and, and, and the Torah's campaign against marrying uh, Canaanites was needed not only because the Canaanite religion was likely a component of the Israelites' religious heritage, but because in many pagan religions, the gods came with the locality. Okay? Moving into a new land usually meant paying homage, paying tribute, literally paying uh, in, in sacrifices to the gods of that locality who govern the elements in that locality. Okay. Moreover, in, in, and so you have here the Israelites moving from wherever they came from into Canaan or from regions in Canaan to other regions in Canaan and, and therefore um, paying tribute, worshiping the the these new gods in these new territories for them. And add to that the fact that in moving from the southern desert, the southern deserts into Canaan, the Israelites transitioned from a nomadic and migratory economy and culture to an agricultural economy and culture. It seems that the Israelite God was connected to the, to the desert. Okay, there's several, uh, several of the pivotal events uh, tying God to the Israelites take place in the Sinai or Negev deserts okay, to the south of Canaan. And so, so it's, it's likely that the Israelite God's uh, cult was well, you know the, the worship was well suited to a migratory culture 
By contrast, Canaanite gods were agricultural gods, okay, connected to the various seasons, weather events, agricultural events. Um, and thus, it is possible that in transitioning from the desert to the more fertile territory um, in, of, of, of Canaan and transitioning from trading and herding to agriculture, the Israelites attributed to their God, the God that they brought with them from the desert, the various functions that Canaanites attributed to their agricultural gods. So, so the fact that the Torah attributes to God the names, titles, and accomplishments of the Canaanite gods, and even trumps the, uh, the, the, the accomplishments of these other gods, of these foreign gods, these Canaanite gods, shouldn't be seen as problematic. Okay, it ought not to suggest that the Bible reveals uh, traces of paganism within biblical Judaism. Okay? Some mix of the Canaanite and Mesopotamian, and Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian uh, religions had been the Israelites' original religion, as the story of Abraham's religious conversion acknowledges. The process of them creating a new religion involved addressing Canaanite mythology and creating a competing mythology for Israelites. Okay, kind of like saying, you silly pagans think that your gods did A, B, and C, but we know that in fact, our God, the one true God, is the one who did all these things. And uh, in, in this Israelite creation mythology explained to Israelites, to Israelites, not only the world around them, which all mythologies do, but also their unique and novel monotheistic religion. Instances, instances in which the Bible appropriates or addresses components of Canaanite mythology are representatives, uh, uh, you know, they, they represent an emerging Israelite religion, a religion that is monotheistic, and whose God is uniquely connected to this one people. And, uh, and, and this national religion was trying to establish itself in competition with the reigning religion of the region, which the Bible tells us was prevalent among Israelites themselves. The, the, the Canaanite religion was prevalent among Israelites because it was the reigning religion in the lands which the Israelites uh, took over, you know, settled under Joshua and the later judges. Um, and also the, 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 the Canaanite religion was prevalent among Israelites because it was an agricultural religion that matched the Israelites' new economic lives as a settled people in Canaan. Okay? Not to mention the fact that it was probably practiced because there was intermarriage, something that the Bible complains about as well you know, intermarriage between Israelites and Canaanites. So, so a reader could see this as syncretism, okay, as, as religious bo uh, borrowing, you know, as Israelites borrowing pagan elements, or carrying over pagan elements into their own religion, okay, adopting and adapting elements of one religion into another. But it seems more like religious combat, okay? an effort to elevate the Israelite God above the other gods of the ancient Near East, to discredit those other gods as non-gods, and to separate Israelites from the, from the worship of these old, local, non-gods, okay? to reveal to Israelites that these are non-gods, they're images made of wood and stone, in no way comparable to your God, to the true God. So separating Israelites from the local population, you know, from local women in Canaan, was part of this fight between the old religion of the land of Canaan 
in the new religion that entered that locality with the Israelites. 